Okay, I'm going to make a quick video here showing a solution to a problem that has plagued me for some time with uh, the digital denture stuff. So what you're seeing right here is a model that was generated by scanning an upper uh, edentulous impression. And so this is uh, my most common workflow that I'll do for dentures is actually scanning the impressions. And then we need to turn those into working models. Okay, so if you look at this model right here, um, you know, right now there's not a, a base to it. It's not printable. And we need to do that. And so normally, if I, if I was doing this with the toothborne model, then I will show you what I would do. I would come up here, I would select the border, and I would optimize the boundary, and then I would smooth the boundary so that it's nice and smooth. And with that done, I would hit T for transform on the keyboard, and I would just extrude the entire um, boundary up. And the problem with doing that on edentulous stuff is this because you're, you're really uh, concerned about capturing the entire boundary or the vestibular extension, you can't just trim the boundary back and get rid of all the little areas that aren't to your liking. And so what happens is any area that your, your model kind of swoops outward and then comes back over itself, when you drag that boundary down, it's gonna create a fold in the mesh or a place where the mesh crosses over itself. And that's what you're seeing right there. Uh, furthermore, when you did this, even if you didn't have those, you don't have a land area, and land areas are important in a lot of different respects in removable dentures. So this was a problem that really was uh, driving me nuts for a little while, and the solution is actually pretty simple. What I'm going to do is just add a base to it and a different method. So I'm going to come to Mesh Mix and grab just a primitive shape, and I need to put this shape over here. So what I want you to think of this as is just like um, having your assistant pour a base and then they, you know, plop it down on a big patty of stone on the tabletop. Well, this is your tabletop. OK, so it doesn't need to be this tall. You could break that down a little bit, but you do want it to go well beyond the boundaries kind of way out here. And then when you look from the front way out this way. OK, now I'll accept that. Now, one thing I'm going to. Uh, point out real quickly. I'm using the select tool and do you see how non-dense this mesh is? That's going to create some problems that I won't go into. Just take my word for it that it will. So one way, you've got a couple of ways. You could select all this and go to edit and remesh. My preferred method is just to go up here to make solid. And in the process of making solid, it's going to also make a more dense mesh. Notice here when I do this now. And so what I'm going to do here is I want to create a perimeter. Okay, I'll delete that and then delete the whole inner side. And now what I'm going to do is fuse the borders of the denture out to the borders of this. And that's pretty easy to do. Uh, you're going to start by combining these models. You've got to have them as a single STL. Okay, so you see the model now, and we have joined these th two things together. And so what I'm gonna do now is come over with the select tool, and I'm going to select this portion of the boundary, and then using a small piece so I don't mess up this mesh, mesh I'm gonna come and select that one. Let's go ahead and make sure we optimize those boundaries and smooth those boundaries. So I've accepted that, and now this becomes very simple. Just come up to edit, and let's join. All right, you see the end result. And so you've just used the tabletop and you've poured up a massive base with great land areas now. As you can see, there's no folds anywhere because what you do when you use that join tool is that this uh, edge of this mesh is going to come out and grab and join to the closest piece of mesh uh, that it can reach. So with that done, now we can just hit clear selection and this becomes very easy now to uh, make your model look like you want it to. I'm going to just now uh, come around with the select tool and I'm going to make a land area just like we're taught to do in D1 removable. Okay, delete that. And if you select all the connected parts, expand it to the connected. Now you can just invert that and delete all the rest of that. So that has served its purpose. And now what I can do is just do this like I would have done a toothborn model. Okay, select the boundary, 
Let's move the boundary. And then T for transform, and let's just extrude this upward. Okay. So now you can see how nice of a base that uh, results in. So I'm going to look at the model and make sure that it's parallel to the ridge. That looks great. And then you could plane cut it to get a closed model should you need one. So once again, I do try to do this parallel to the uh, ridge itself. All right, there we go. So now you have a completed master model. This would print well. This would uh, be more conducive uh, to really anything you're going to do with digital dentures, uh, as well as any kind of analog workflow. If you needed to conventionally process on this or whatever, uh, this is going to be a much more useful model. So that is how I put bases uh, on removable uh, uh, denture models without losing any of my boundaries. And just a real quick addition, uh, I thought about the lowers. The lowers do have one unique attribute that's going to make them slightly different, um, and that is the tongue space. Okay, so before you do that process that I just showed for the upper, for a lower, come down here and close in the tongue space first. So what I would suggest is find the deepest spot on the uh, lingual vestibular extension, okay, and just select a piece of that mesh. I uh, need to zoom in closer so I can see better. Get a little piece of that border. And then same over here. A piece of that border. And go over here and bridge. All right, you can see that that has bridged. So now it's going to, um, you know, function much more like a, uh, you know, one piece model, kind of like the uh, the maxillary did. You could close in this little gap by running the inspector and it's going to highlight this area being a hole. You can just fill that in. And there we have that. So uh, from here, you would just proceed just like you would on that maxillary one, uh, and this shouldn't give you any problems once you do that step. Those areas, and go to smooth, and you could do, uh, you know, maximum smoothness, so max smoothness. And there you see that's a perfectly smooth um, lingual tongue area. Okay, so proceed uh, just like the other one for the rest of this.